So it's called binomial probability. Okay, so number one here, if you're gonna flip a coin 20 times, what's the probability that it will land on heads exactly 15 times? Okay, so we're gonna do this part of the formula, NCX. So we had 20 coin flips, and we're trying to choose 15 of them to be a head. So 20 flips, we're trying to choose 15 of them to be a head. Okay, P is the probability of this happening. So what's the probability when you flip a coin, it will be a head? 0.5, and we want to get that 15 times. Then Q is the probability of not heads. What's the probability of getting not a head on a coin, aka a tail? 0.5. And out of those flips, how many times are we wanting to flip a tail? What do you think here? We had 15 heads, so how many tails are we going to have to flip? Five, right? Because we had 20 flips. Okay. That, you're just gonna go times, 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 all in one step, okay? Don't try to write them all separately. It's just really small numbers and stuff. So do you remember how to do the choose button? 20 choose 15 times 0.5 to the 15 times 0.5 to the five. Okay, so it's okay if you leave it like that. If I wanted to, to do a decimal or a percent, there's a 1.48% chance, if you were to flip 20 coins, that you're gonna get 15 heads. That's the percent probability that that will happen. Right, and it's low. What should you technically get? How many head, heads should you get? 10. Okay, so getting 15 is quite a bit. Okay, Stephanie makes 90% of her free throws. She's going to shoot free, three free throws. What's the probability that she's going to make exactly two out of three? So my choose is that I have three shots and I'm going to have to choose two of them to make. Right, so we could make, make, miss. We could make, miss make or we could miss make make right what's the percent probability here that she's going to make so we were given there's a 90 percent chance so 0.9 and how many shots are we wanting to make two Okay, now this is the not doing that. So what's the percent chance that you're not gonna make a shot? 10% chance? And how many shots are we wanting to miss? We're gonna have to miss one of them. Does that make sense? If you make two, you're gonna miss one. Okay, and again, just times, times, times. So it's Three choose two times 0.9 to the two times 0.1 to the one. Okay, so that was a little bit of a higher probability that that would happen. Okay. Last one, Luke has a 20% chance of making a free throw. He's going to shoot four. What's the probability of getting exactly two shots? So four shots. We're going to choose 
for him to make two of them. Okay, there's a 20% chance he's going to make the shot. So 0.2, and he's going to make two of them. Now, what are the odds that he's going to miss the shot? 80% chance of missing, and he's going to miss two. Make two, miss two. Okay, and I just typed all of that in in one long step. So point one five three six. Okay, so that's the odds that Luke will make two shots. Okay, and it's low because uh, twenty percent shooting free throw percent is not very good. Okay, and then we're going to do this page. Okay, so all these formulas are on your formula sheet for binomial distribution. Okay, a flight holds 220 passengers. The probability that someone does not show up is 5%. Flights always overbook and they decide to sell 225 tickets. Would this be a good decision? Okay, so we're going to get the mean. Okay, so this top one is the mean. We're selling 225 tickets. And we're expecting what percent of people to show up. This is not showing up. So 95% of people will show up. So I'm going to times that by 0.95. So this is my mean. That's how many ex I'm expecting. OK. Standard deviation, so that's this last one. This one's variance. So this one, the standard deviation, is the square root of n, so 225 tickets, times the probability, 0.95, times the q, which is the not probability. So if this was 95%, this is 5%. Okay, so that's the P and the Q, the probability of doing it versus not doing it, the P and the Q. Okay, be careful that that is a 0 0.05, right? Square root that. And I got 14.6. Seems, I'm going to do that again. Nope, nope. I knew I typed something wrong. That was too high. 3.27. 225 times 0.95 times 0 0.05. And then I square root answer. Yeah. Okay. So, you know I'm a drawer. I'm expecting this much. Okay, we're talking about overbooking this flight. So there's 220 people allowed on this flight. And I'm worried, I'm worried about being over that because then that's a problem, right? If I've booked too many tickets or the too many people have showed up. Okay, um, this is what is a little bit tricky here. 
220 is okay. I can still be at 220 tickets. It's a problem if I'm over. So I'm going to use 220.5. Okay, so now I'm going to go to my Z scores. Okay, so I'm going to do the process. So my score, 220.5. Subtract the mean score divided by the standard deviation is a Z score of 2.06. I got 2.06. Because my flight was 220, and then we talked about overbooking your flight. So to overbook, I'm worried about being oh. above 220. That makes my flight get overbooked. Okay, now I'm gonna go to that chart, 2.06 Z score. I'm gonna do the lookup, so 2.06. And I'm getting 0 0.4803. Am I in the right spot? 0 0.4803. Then I'm going to do that from a half, right? You see my visual here? A half minus the 0 0.4803 leaves me with. analyzing this, you have a 1.97 chance, percent chance that you're going to overbook. So is this a good decision? Would you risk it? Yeah. Yeah, if that's the percent chance that you have of being overbooked, then take the risk. You're selling a bunch of extra tickets. Okay, let's try the next one then. We got 211 seats on the plane. The company overbooks and they sell 234 tickets. The probability of not showing up is that. I'm just going to do this right away here. So this is a 0.9328. Okay, those are the opposite probabilities. Not showing up, so that'll be showing up. Okay. Same idea here, so we're going to go with the mean. We're selling 234 tickets, and we're expecting 93.28 people to come. Okay, that's how many tickets we're selling. We're expecting that percentage of people to come. Okay, so that's um, what I'm expecting. Ooh, this is already a bad decision, but if I'm expecting that and there's only that many seats, I can already tell this is not good. Okay, standard deviation is the square root of the number, so 234, times the P, times the Q. 
which is the probability of showing and the probability of not showing. Square root that. So I'm getting a 3.83. Okay, so here's the mean, and we're worried about overbooking. So if there's 211 seats, I'm worried about being anything over 211. This is the bad zone. I don't want to be in that zone. Then I'm in trouble with my overbooks. Okay, so we're going to get a Z score. So that would be where we are. So 211.5. Subtract mean over standard. Okay, that always gives me a Z score. I get a negative one point seven seven. Okay, 1.77, 1.77, so I'm getting a 0.4616, plus a 0.5, this is not good, there's a 96.16% chance of overbooking. So you're going to have to figure out some kind of conclusion, like not a good decision, not a good business decision. Okay, I have another one. Do we, I feel like it's not really that different. Do we need three examples or are we okay? Does that feel okay? Because I don't think it's any different. 